Dr. Ken here with you. This is Electromagnetism, lesson number one, the exercise tutorials. Now, our exercise tutorials, if you didn't know before, this is how they work. Step one, the exercise question is posed on the video. The student then pauses and attempts the question. Step two, continue to play the video. I'll provide a hint that gives you a little bit of assistance and again, pause the video and complete the exercise. Step three, continue to play the video. The answer is provided, but not only is the answer provided, we give you a work explanation of how we got to the answer. And then step four, we continue on with the question. So let's get started with our first question. What type of magnet loses most of its magnetism as the magnetizing force is removed? So the question again, question one, what type of magnet loses most of its magnetism as the magnetizing force is removed? Is it a permanent magnet, a rare earth magnet, a temporary magnet, or a paramagnet? So pause here. Here's your hint. Think about magnetic induction. When you learn about magnetic induction, what was happening? So here's the answer. It's a temporary magnet. So anything that comes under the influence of a magnetizing force that actually concentrates or helps to concentrate the magnetic lines of flux becomes a temporary magnet magnet. Question two. The law of magnetism state. So what does the law of magnetism state? That's question two. A. All magnets have a magnetic field. B. Like poles repel. C. Opposite poles repel. Or D. Like poles attract. So pause here. Here's your hint. So draw two magnets and then draw in how the fields interact. And maybe that will remind you what the law is. So here's our answer. The answer is like poles repel. So all magnets do have a magnetic field, but that's not the law. B is the correct answer, like poles repel. Opposite poles repel, no, opposite poles actually attract. And like poles repel, they don't attract. So the only possible answer was B. Question three, the end of a magnet that points north is the what? Is it the south pole, the east pole, the west pole, or the North Pole. So pause here while you answer the question. So here's our hint. How do magnetic fields align? How do they align themselves? So our answer is the end of a magnetic pole that points north is the North Pole because it's aligning itself with the Earth's magnetic field. Question four, what is the magnetism left in soft iron called after a strong magnetic field has been removed? So question four, what is the magnetism left in a soft iron called after a strong magnetic field has been removed? A, permanent magnetism, B, residual magnetism, C, temporary magnetism, or D, induced magnetism. So pause here. Here's your hint. List all the different magnetic effects and which one would apply here. So the correct answer is residual magnetism. So obviously not permanent magnetism for A. B, residual magnetism, which is the proper answer. Temporary magnetism means it's magnetized while the field's there, but the magnetism does not, 
there's none left over when you remove it. And induced magnetism again is also a permanent magnetism. So we call it residual magnetism. Question five, a ferromagnetic material has a high watt. So A, question five, A, ferromagnetic material has a high watt. Magnetism, alloy contents, ferrite contents, permeability. So pause here. Here's your hint. List all the different types of magnetic characteristics and how might that apply to something that is ferromagnetic. So here's our answer. The answer is D, permeability. So A was not, you, you don't have high and low levels of magnetism. The alloy contents, it's not really gonna tell you a great deal. Ferrite content, again, not gonna tell you a great deal, but the way we measure something, we say, a ferromagnetic material has high permeability because it conducts a magnetic field easily and well. Question six, what is residual magnetism? So A, magnetic induction. B, small level of magnetism. C, strong magnetic field. Or D, strong permeability. So what is residual magnetism? Pause here. Here's the hint. What does the word residual mean? So when we say, what is residual magnetism? What do we mean by the word residual? So the answer is a small level of magnetism. So if it's got a small level of magnetism, then it's probably got residual magnetism. It may be produced by magnetic induction. Yes, but it's not what it is. And C, it's certainly not a strong magnetic field. And you might even have reasonable permeability or strong permeability, but that doesn't mean a magnetic field will be left. So a small magnetic field that is left over is called residual magnetism. Question seven, what does the term permeability mean? So question seven, pause here. What does permeability mean? Either A, low resistance to a magnetic line to force, resistance to magnetic lines of force, high resistance to magnetic lines of force, or ease at which a magnetic flux can pass through a material. So what does permeability mean? Here's your hint. How does this relate to magnetic flux? So think about permeability and how it relates to magnetic flux. The answer is the ease at which a magnetic flux can pass through a material. So that's what permeability is. It's all about the ease at which a magnetic flux can pass through a material. It may have low resistance to a magnetic lines of force, which means it has a low permeability, but it isn't what defines permeability. Resistance to a magnetic lines of force, again, it can be a characteristic of permeability, but doesn't describe it and higher resistance to magnetic lines of force, again, can describe permeability, but doesn't define it. So D is the best answer, ease at which a magnetic field can pass through a material. Question eight, what does the term resistivity mean? A, how well the material will remain in a magnetic field, how much flux a magnet can produce, C, describes the strength of the magnetic lines of force or ease at which a magnetic flux can pass through the material. So pause here. So we're thinking for the definition of retentivity. Here's the hint. This word comes from the base word to retain. Retentivity means to retain, so which description here is going to best fit A, B, C or D. And finally, our answer, how well a material will maintain a magnetic field is how retentive it is, how likely the field is to stay in the material. So B, how much flux a magnet can produce is not an answer. 
uh, describe the strength of the lines of magnetic force. Well, it's, it's got to do with it, but doesn't define it. And D, ease at which a magnetic flux passes through a material. Again, it's kind of the, another characteristic. It's not resistivity. So the answer was how well a material will maintain a magnetic field within it. And our last question, a magnetic pole measuring 200 millimetres by 200 millimetres and produces 100 lines of magnetic force, calculate the density. So a magnetic pole measures 20 millimetres by 20 millimetres, produces 100 lines of magnetic force, calculate the flux density. So pause here. Here's your hint, it's the formula, B equals phi on A. So pause while you work out how to operate the formula. So here's our answer. And let me go through the answer with you carefully. So we have 100 lines of force, which if we multiply by 10 to the minus 8, tells us that we actually have one micro Weber of force. We also know A is for area, so our 20 times 20 gives us 400 millimetres squared. But remember our formula needs the answers in meters squared, not millimeters squared, so that will be 400 times 10 to the minus 6. So we can now apply our formula because we have all the units that we need and we have them in the right sizes. So B, the flux density, is going to be phi, 1 microweber, divided by 400 times 10 to the minus 6. So in this particular case, we've got 1 times 10 to the minus 6, that's our micro webbers so that's at what my minus six is that gives me my one, one micro weber my 400 times 10 to the minus six is our area divide the two and i get 2.5 times 10 to the minus three teslas and i could re-express that as 2.5 milli teslas is the answer of the flux density So that brings us to the end of Electromagnetism Lesson 1, Exercise Tutorial. I hope you've learned a little bit as we've gone through the exercise tutorial.